hello humans it's just martine and today i'm going to be sharing with you the reviews of me reading my priority nonfiction. i have a lot of nonfiction on my shelves a lot of nonfiction sounds interesting to me i really love learning and reading as a method of learning but I rarely read nonfiction books. I'm really bad at getting around to them, especially because I read so much for school. So I read tons of nonfiction for school. And then when I have my own reading time, I'm like, well, I just want to read for fun. <laughs> just fun, silly books, no brain needed. But here I chose some books that I'd really been meaning to get around to that were nonfiction and I read them and reviewed them. So enjoy. I read No Choir Boy and I thought this was a very short um, but impactful book and I ended up giving it four stars. One thing that was pretty unique about this book is I read plenty of nonfiction about prisons and even later in this challenge you're going to see that there's more nonfiction about prisons and times in prison that I'm going to read. I do think that I read quite a bit of it. So this one though what was interesting in comparison to some other nonfiction books is it definitely was just comprised of interviews with different juveniles who had been through the system, especially juveniles who had ended up on death row before that was overturned in the Supreme Court in Roper v. Simmons. But I think it's definitely an interesting thing to tackle. And it was specifically interesting here for the juveniles because I feel like even when you do have books that are conversations or interviews with the people who have spent time in prison or who are still in prison, oftentimes we're not looking at conversations that we're having with juveniles because largely we're leaving them out of the system, even though the way that different rules function, it's still pretty easy for kids to not just be in juvie or we don't talk about their time in juvie as much as we should. And so in general, I feel like often in the literature, we neglect adolescents who are incarcerated. And so from that perspective, it was definitely interesting. It wasn't a five stars because like it didn't have me fully hooked and I felt like maybe it would have benefited from some sections expounding on the interviews, make it slightly more informative so that you had the personal touches of the interviews and then some facts or statistics uh, so that you could merge those statistics with the emotional side of it to really grasp a more complete picture. But overall, it was a great book. I definitely recommend it. Although now it is a bit older. It was published several, several years ago. I think it might have been 2008 or something like that. Anyway, so it's a pretty old book and these types of things change pretty quickly. That said, since it's mainly about personal experiences, that will never change. Somebody's experience was always their experience. So from that point, I recommend it even though it might be considered a little out of date now. Editing Martine here because I seem to have misplaced two of my reviews for this. So I'm going to chat with you about these books right now. So first, I'm going to talk to you about Wonder Woman Psychology, which I ended up giving four stars. This was a Christmas gift it was several years ago at this point, from my twin sister, right around when I was getting interested in psychology. So like sometime in late high school, something like that. Anyway, it basically talks about a lot of psychological constructs in the context of Wonder Woman and also goes into the history of Wonder Woman because Wonder Woman was created by William Marston, who was actually a psychologist. And interestingly enough, he contributed to the polygraph literature quite a bit because he was one of the first people to say we should use things like heart rate and blood pressure to try and determine whether or not someone is telling the truth. Now, polygraphs are not perfectly accurate. They are more accurate than humans are. Humans are about 54% accurate on telling a truth from a lie, so only slightly better than chance. And polygraphs tend to do a bit better than that, although it does depend on the polygraph test and especially on the individual examiner. But in general, it's not really supported by the scientific community, and so it's not ever presented as evidence. And that's fascinating because originally William Marston was one of the ones who brought the polygraph up to the Supreme Court in the Fry case? Who is it versus Fry anyway? And created the Fry standard for whether or not something is admissible in court from a like expert testimony perspective and so polygraphs are not included in expert testimony and so it was fascinating to read this book and then later in my interrogation and detecting deception class this semester also hear about some of these cases that were discussed in depth in this book so that was really fun and in general i love a transfer i love when you can explain psychological concepts and 
give examples of things in like literature or everyday life to help people understand the construct better. That's usually how I study for things. Like in my cross-cultural psychology class, all my notes were covered with transfers to how it applied to Ender's Game, and that's how I studied. So I also loved that aspect of this. It did not get a five stars because it was not quite as interesting or gripping as I would have liked it to be to be five stars, and I think there were some areas of conversation that maybe should have been discussed that were under discussed or not looked at in the same way that would be as interesting to me as possible but regardless it was a really great read then i read without conscience by robert hare who is the person who invented the pclr which is a psychopathy checklist revised which is the checklist that helps psychologists determine whether or not somebody is a psychopath and so this was his book about psychopaths and I gave it a 4.5 stars. The only reason it wasn't a 5 was because it maybe didn't hold my attention. It got pretty repetitive at some points but in general it was just fascinating to read this work by the person who created this checklist that we still use to this day and so I think if you want to learn more technical things about psychopathy then I definitely recommend this book. It's a short read and it was originally recommended to me by my abnormal psychology teacher. It used to be a required reading in her class but then it wasn't but I bought it anyway and clearly I enjoyed it so good and now it's part of my collection which is great. I don't know why I lost those reviews but there we go we made up for them. Back to past Martine. For my last read for this I read The Sun Does Shine How I Found Life and Freedom on Death Row by Anthony Ray Hinton who spent 30 years on death row for a crime actually multiple crimes he did not commit. I gave this four stars. This made me mad in all the ways it was supposed to make me mad about the system. I've said it so many times. I'm going to keep saying it. The death penalty shouldn't exist. <clears throat> Justice in America is broken in so many ways and this highlighted so many of them in just one case and I am beside myself with like how many people were complicit in this absolute tragedy? Anthony Ray Hinton has basically spent half his life in death row. Like that's, that's unacceptable. That shouldn't be a thing. He shouldn't have been convicted in the first place. And then he shouldn't have been sentenced to death. And then he shouldn't have been there for 30 years. And even once they got the best lawyer on the case, Brian Stevenson, who even won a Supreme Court case for this, it still took like 15 years to get him out because the system is so broken. And so many people are just complicit in the brokenness. And states and judges, they don't want to say that they've messed up. Like when they make a mistake, they're going to keep backing that up over and over and over again they're so uncomfortable being wrong that they'd rather kill innocent people. I just, <laughs> you know, it's, this was a really, really, really great book. I definitely recommend it to everyone, but know that it's a hard read because even though Anthony Ray Hinton like made literally the best possible out of the worst possible situation, it's still excruciating to read how many people failed him along the way. People who could have done things, but they didn't because they were greedy, because they were prejudiced. They thought that their exhaustion and their life circumstances were more important than this innocent man on death row. I just, I can't. And I'm livid about it. And this is part of why I study what I study. We can learn to make things better. The problem is then that we have to take the information that we know about how to make things better and we actually have to apply them and make things better. And it's frustrating and it's never going to be perfect, but I think it's worth trying. This is just a reminder to myself, you know, and to everyone else, keep trying to make it better keep trying. I think this went really well. It was like all four stars and 4.5 thrown in there. So I'm very happy with how this turned out. I had a great reading experience with this. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and comment down below what nonfiction book is at the top of your TBR and subscribe for more reading, writing, and college lifestyle content. And until next time, bye humans, bye!